collapsed. And uh, what we found was as we advanced from two different sides, we had people in the middle uh, of the fighting and uh, civilians in particular. So after 2004, we studied how we did it and came up with a new plan to minimize uh, the danger to civilians. Can, the cloverleaf on the far right over there was a heavily contested uh, area during the months between April and November. Uh, they fortified, and I'll show you in a subsequent slide, that entire northeastern portion of the city was heavily fortified, sandbag walled up, and every time you drove along that road you see to the right, which rose up, it put you up on a shooting gallery, basically, people would shoot at you from the city uh, any time of day from up there. So we built a military bypass along the far right of your picture um, down below this freeway to avoid people shooting at us. It was uh, basically a fortified city for months before we cleared it. Next slide. Uh, I've talked a little bit about this, so I'm just going to keep, keep moving along, please. Next slide. Basically, I mentioned the insurgent sanctuary. We stood, we, we came to a negotiated solution and really what happened was there was a political, uh, there was some political pressure for us not to clear the city, especially with all those civilians in, in it during, in April. The Iraqi government was unwilling and others to allow us to clear that. So uh, about halfway into uh, the operation in April, the 1st Marine Division was recalled and told to pull back to positions outside the city. And you can imagine how the Marines felt um, being called off, uh, especially after they had had brother Marines uh, hurt and killed uh, to do this. Next slide. Uh, we came, this is uh, just an example of, of the, the situation at the time. When we arrived in, in June, 3-1, the battalion I served in, this was our sector. 850 square kilometers to the east of Fallujah, which you see there uh, with the FB um, in the center of your screen. We had Abu Ghraib prison. And in our area, several small cities and uh, a wide scattering of countryside, and people were shooting rockets into our camps from along the river line there, and they knew what our boundaries were. And you can see all the different units, 1st Cav, our battalion, 2-1, 1st BCT, Recon, the MEF headquarters group that was in Camp Fallujah to the east of the city, and the 24th Mew. So a lot of different units, a lot of coordination going on, big scattered countryside, and this uh, sanctuary in the middle where people would come out every day and put bombs on the road and shoot rockets at us from, from the city. Next slide. This is an example of the events that occurred in our battalion sector between June and October. And it, ver it varies there from suicide bombers. We had five different attacks on our battalion in those months. Um, IEDs, caches, sniper events. And as you can see there, it was, uh, it was a full plate every day. And it was, I can't tell you what the, the feelings, the emotions were of the men who had to endure these attacks every day for those m many months, knowing that these people were protected in that city, that they could go back to that city and, uh, and be safe in there from, from us. So uh, it was, uh, the men were ready when the time came to clear the city. Next slide. This is just a quick, uh, you know, statistical thing. Basically, in, in a nutshell, we had 10 IED attacks a week on our, on our uh, people. We lost 10 Marines killed in action and had 150 wounded in the months prior to uh, Fallujah. And we found as many as we were hit by, we had a very uh, efficient battalion, but uh, under the best of circumstances, it's very challenging. Next slide. This was what Fallujah looked like uh, prior to our assault. Um, and you can see the, the, uh, the concentrations there. We did a number of operations to the south. Uh, and uh, we had attacked from the south in Fallujah 1. So the insurgents thought that, coupled with all the activity that went around that cloverleaf I told you to the right, 
uh, the insurgents built up th these sections, and we continued to allow them to believe that that's how we would attack the city uh, the second time around. We did a number of deception operations that, that uh, kept them oriented there. Uh, ultimately, we came from the north, as I'll show you in just a minute. Next slide. Uh, this was our mission, and uh, foreign infantrymen, this is the ultimate mission. Uh, we came to Iraq to rebuild it, to stabilize it, uh, and to return it to, uh, to, to the people of Iraq and allow them to have democracy and enjoy some of the blessings of liberty that we're so privileged to have. Um, but at the end of the day, when it came time to clear a sanctuary of, of insurgents, of terrorists, etc., cetera, um, this was the mission. And, uh, you know, we were, we were cleared to, to do whatever we had to do to, uh, to get rid of these people in the city. Next slide. Um, very quickly, eliminate the sanctuary, set conditions for local control, legitimate government control, and, uh, you know, enable the government of Iraq to get back into Fallujah and, uh, you know, return the city to the people and not to all these others who had occupied it. And in the course of our fighting, we uncovered set people from 17 different nations uh, from around the greater Arab world um, and beyond. Next slide. Uh, big, big busy slide of task organization. The bottom line is we had four Marine infantry battalions and two Army cavalry battalions that composed the, uh, the assault forces. And we had a whole host of others who ensured that we could uh, cordon the city effectively, not allow anyone to escape, and cover the other lines of communication into Baghdad, et cetera. It was a complete joint operation, and it took far more than the, uh, the six battalions that actually physically assaulted it. Next slide. Uh, <clears throat> We built up a tremendous amount of supplies. We did battle handovers. We integrated with army units coming from other parts of Iraq. Uh, we even had the Black Watch come up from, uh, from the south uh, of Iraq to cover our lines of communication. Uh, coalition effort. We also integrated a large amount of Iraqi security forces who Believe it or not, you know, we, were, we weren't sure, but they, they were shoulder to shoulder with us in the city, and they really performed their duties very, very well, which, which gave a lot of us great hope that there was what we're seeing now finally come to pass three years later. They, they are able to take over and assume the lead in many regards. Next slide. Uh, here's the, uh, the shaping phase. I talked to you a little about how we tried to uh, provide some deception efforts. The, the thing you see up at the top, the symbol up there, was a, a, an armored reconnaissance we conducted just to be sure that our armor penetration would be able to come over uh, a large built-up uh, railroad track that ran east to west north of the city, that our avenues of approach in there would be sufficient to allow an armored penetration. But the serious activity occurred there to those two symbols you see to the right, 3-1, the battalion I served in, and 3-5, Sergeant Workman's battalion over there uh, to the northeast. This really oriented them away from where we were really going to conduct the penetration. Next slide. Uh, in the shaping phases, I would run, we ran uh, UAVs over the city and took pictures for battle damage assessment uh, as we did various operations. One of the things we noticed was this martyr cemetery here, which uh, people from outside Fallujah were buried in. They weren't allowed in the city cemetery. So this is where they buried the foreign fighters uh, that were billeted in the city, and there were thousands of them. Uh, and after each operation, we would track how many new ditches were dug. And so it was, a, it was an opportunity for us to gauge our, how well we were doing in these, uh, in these operations. And so I had this briefed every, every uh, weekly staff meeting and uh, with a little bit of pride that we were having some effect on target there. Next slide.